And Father God, we do want to thank you, Lord, that you hold our very lives in your hands, Lord, and we are sheltered, Lord. And you say that no one is able to snatch us from your hands, Lord, and we thank you. We praise you for your faithfulness and love, Lord. We thank you for the security we enjoy in you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you're such a great God, Lord. You bring encouragement, Lord. You bring uh, uh, healing to our lives, Lord. You bring uh, uh, your touch for us each and every day, Lord. And we do thank you, Lord. We do praise you for your faithfulness. We thank you for gathering us this night, Lord, that we might come and just sit at your feet and enjoy the sweet fellowship of believers, Lord. And we can just enjoy the praise and worship, the songs that speak of you, Lord, as you lead us into your holy of holies, Lord, into your presence, Lord, into your courts uh, with thanksgiving and with praise in our hearts, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity you give us, Lord, uh, to freely gather to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth, Father. And as we pray for ourselves here in the sanctuary, we pray for those who may be at home watching uh, via uh, distance, uh, distance learning, Lord God, and we pray that your touch might be for their lives as you, it is for ours tonight here in the chapel. We thank you ahead of time for already what you've done, Lord, and what you continue to do and what you will do, Lord, in our midst here this night. We thank you, Father. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey guys, good to uh, good to see you folks, and uh, just a blessing to gather. Uh, we're going to continue in our study through the book of Exodus. If you have your Bibles, or you're going to be following along via your electronic device. Uh, we'll be going through Exodus chapter 14 tonight. Exodus 14. You know, we've been praying for COVID relief, guys, and though the numbers look good, uh, uh, the far-reaching effects of being shut in, un unemployed or underemployed, uh, distance learning, along with other ill effects, are still unknown. And, you know, they're going to continue on. It's, it's going to be a while before we really see hey, what's, what's happened and what, uh, what's going on within our community. I know that uh, one of our neighbors... Uh, the parent was sharing that, hey, their student was a middle school student was uh, on the honor roll. But since being shut in at home during the pandemic, you know, he has uh, uh, three Fs in three of his classes. Uh, so they really uh, are looking forward to having uh, the kids go back. Uh, they noted that the older son is managing okay, but the younger one just needed that structure and that encouragement. And even though he was a good student at home, uh, it, it just uh, wasn't working, so they were really looking forward to that. That's an immediate effect, but you know, be be ready to give them a word of encouragement. And even for we as Christians, you know, we have the Lord, we have the joy as a strength. But a lot of the trauma and the stress that the world is going through, you know, it kind of splashes onto us, and we feel the uh, the effects of these things. And uh, uh, as, as they splash onto you, as you, you feel the weight coming on, it just continue to give it over to God, give it over to Him and say, hey, Lord, you take it. And as often as we take it back, give it back over to Him because otherwise we surely be weighed down. Otherwise, we surely be bothered and, you know, just crushed by the sheer burden and the weight of the world. So, uh, you know, uh, give it over to God and uh, he's, he's able to do the do far beyond what we could think or ask. But last week we saw in chapter 13 that as the Lord led Israel out of Egypt, that he went before them. We made note in chapter 13, or verse, uh, uh, chapter 13, verse 21, that the Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way, and a pillar of fire by night to give them light that they might travel both day and night. Uh, you know, they were really on the move as they exited uh, uh, Egypt and uh, God was making that way. You might say or conclude that a covering by day and light for night, warmth and comfort uh, by night, uh, all this may have been a great truth of the Lord, a covering for his people as he went, uh, uh, as he, as, uh, as a heat in the world and friendly fire by night to give reassurance. And hope, you know, uh, you know, kids love night lights. I know that uh, the night lights were a big thing uh, for children back in the days. And uh, uh, you might conclude that just that little bit of light 
takes the edge off the scariness of the darkness. And the children of Israel, like, like regular kids today and some people today, uh, uh, they said that, hey, that little bit of light just brings a little bit of comfort, a little bit of uh, a knowledge that, hey, uh, the dark unknown, you know, the light pierces the darkness. And uh, I, I really uh, think back at the early days of K-Light Radio where we, again, we thought that, hey, K-Light Radio was really piercing the darkness with the Word of God and going forth with power and with might. And again, here we go on in verse 14, chapter 14. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Tell the sons of Israel, turn back and camp at Pihaharoth, be, uh, between Migdal and the sea, and you should camp in front of Baal Zephon, opposite uh, by the sea. Uh, like Moses uh, uh, and Israel, guys, we don't have all the insight or every explanation. We do know in Israel's case that they had just witnessed some of the most incredible miracles ever to be seen by mankind. Any time for all time, you know, the miracles that the Lord did in the land of uh, Egypt was just extremely phenomenal. Uh, they had had good reason to trust God and His Word. And you know, much of the time, for most of us here tonight, we have experienced the miracle of the Lord's touch for our lives. And we can, you know, we can testify that, wow, God came, God rescued us, God delivered us from certain afflictions, certain maladies, certain addictions, certain uh, addictive behaviors and destructive behaviors. We're on the path of us, many of us, to this place of self-destruction. And God rescued us from that. And uh, we've seen the miracle of God's touch in, in our own changed lives. We, we become those living testimonies uh, of what God has done, you know, his love and his forgiveness, his restoration. But nevertheless, the people uh, uh, of Israel did as directed by the Lord. And, you know, we ought to be doing the same thing, following the Lord's direction, not having too much questions. And, you know, I, I, I try not to question God. I, I really don't want to say, why this, God? Why that? And, and you know, I, it's like uh, I don't trust him. And, at times, we just got to say, Lord, I got to go with the flow. I got to surrender and trust that you're in it, you're moving, you're ministering. Uh, I was praying for a person. Um, funny, you know, I, I, I was uh, uh, in a place of, uh, I, I, I won't share it, but in a place of, uh, uh, you know, meditation and prayer, you know sitting on the pot, sitting on the potty. And I was thinking that that person really, uh, uh, as, as I've, I've heard the, uh, the sharing of the life and stuff like that, the work and life experiences, I thought that that person has really battled all the way along during, uh, during this time, you know, at work. And, you know, the battle hasn't stopped yet. And, uh, you know, I give that person credit because they trust in the Lord and they haven't bailed out. They haven't done this or that. And they just said, hey, God, I believe you got me here and I, I, for this period of time. And uh, I, I, um, I don't know what it is. I don't understand. I know that I'm going through the battle. I know that I'm in the thick of things, but I'm trusting you. And this is where the people did as uh, directed by the Lord. They trusted him. In 3 and 4, the, for the Pharaoh will say to the sons of Israel, say of the sons of Israel, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Thus I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after them. I will be honored through Pharaoh and all his army and the Egyptians will know that I, am, I, that I am the Lord, and they did so. It's uh, not funny or strange that the Lord knows the enemy's playbook. You know, it's like uh, playing basketball, you know the plays, playing football, and you know the plays, and a lot of times these coaches, or a lot of times uh, the, the commentators on TV, they see the play and they, they call it, and you know, they, they, uh, they know uh, what's coming in, they can see the, the thing coming, and but much more with the Lord, he knows the enemy's playbook as if he knew exactly what was in the heart of, these, of those unfriendly towards his people. You know, he just knew what they were thinking. He just said, hey, I got him. And, you know, I'm going to harden my heart. This is my chance. You know, all this time, uh, you know, I, I've been uh, relenting. And yet uh, 
uh, the, the Lord knew what was in the heart of that person. In 5, he says, The king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, and Pharaoh and his servants had a change of heart towards the people. And they said, What is this we have done? For we have let Israel go from, from serving us. If you ever regretted making a decision, or in your heart you said to yourself, What have I done? This is exactly what Pharaoh did. He says, What have I done? And, uh, you, you know, he had remorse, he had regret that he ever had considered uh, and he ever relented to uh, Israel being let go, let, being set free. Uh, what have I done? I let all our slaves go. Who will do the work? Who will serve us and bow down to us? And the, par uh, the parallels are very similar to sin and to Satan, guys. The parallels are very similar to sin and to Satan, wanting, to be, uh, wanting people to be enslaved, wanting people to bow down in bondage and servitude towards that sin. And sin is like that. You gotta bow down and you gotta worship it and you gotta serve that sin and uh, that's how it is uh, exactly. Expect uh, warfare, guys. Expect a battle as the enemy uh, comes against you. Uh, with temptation and frustration and much of the time you know it's discouragement and stuff like that and the pharaoh said hey what have i done why have i let the people go and the, he had a change of heart and you know we know that uh the word repent you know uh, we translated in the new testament greek is a change of direction but pharaoh had a change of heart and it wasn't a good direction he had a change of heart that his heart became embittered and hardened even greater. And he was filled with remorse, not for his sin, but he was filled with regret that he had ever let the people go. Because uh, these were a good source of labor. They were free labor. They, they worked the land. They worked his building projects. They did this. They taught in his schools. They served in his, uh, in his castles. And, you know, they... Uh, they were all the servants. They did all the work of service, all the things of the baking the, baking the rolls and baking the flatbread and, you know, tending of the cattle and the sheep and whatever it might have been. But, you know, expect that battle as the enemy comes against you with temptation, frustration, discouragement. That's just the tip of the spear, guys. But in 6 and 7, he goes on. So he took his chariot ready. He made his chariot ready and took his people with him. He took 600 select chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. These 600 choice or select chariots and all the other chariots represented a most formidable opposing fighting force. Do you know that in World War II, when uh, there was a, the Germans had this general by the name of Rommel, and Rommel with some 200 tanks and uh, 2,000 motorcycles, get this, he invaded, uh, he invaded France. And in a matter of a few days, he had just conquered the entirety of France with, uh, with just 200 tanks, 2,000 motorcycles, and about 10 or 20,000 foot soldiers. He ran right through France, he conquered France. Uh, it's, it's said that he, uh, uh, he was in his staff car uh, at one point alone. He overtook a French column of 40 tanks. He stopped the column and he demanded that the uh, commandant, the commandeer of the tank column surrender to him. And they did, they surrendered to Rommel without firing a shot. There was this one single guy that struck so much fear in the heart of the French people that he, uh, he got them to surrender without firing a shot. But you know, uh, this, these, uh, these choice select chariots really represented the very best of the armored cavalry of the day. And they were like tanks. And if you think that you had 600 choice chariots and, other, uh, uh, and all the other chariots of Egypt, it was a formidable fighting force that was chasing after you. Again, uh, uh, it was no match for the people. The people of Israel were no match. It was a done deal. They were going to get mowed down. They were going to get slaughtered. And if you have a, 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 a chariot coming towards you, you know, they would just run you down. They would just run you over. And they would just be slashing and stabbing and whatever it might be. But uh, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the real world, uh, the Egyptians would mow down the Isra uh, Israelis like a springtime grass, guys. You know, just like running your lawn, mow over the lawn. And, but in God's world, it, it was not to be so. You know, it was, it was God behind the, the, the men, you know, that would uh, 
uh, would have to face the enemy. But God uh, said, hey, the battle is mine. And uh, stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, Moses told the people uh, in the com upcoming verses. But in 8 and 9, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he chased after the sons of uh, Israel uh, as the sons of Israel were going through, um, going out boldly. Then the Egyptians chased after them, and with all the horses, all the chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen, his army, they overtook them, camping by the sea, besides Pihai Haroth in front of Baal Zephon. Uh, just as the Lord had set the stage, set the stage, the children of Israel was there at the appointed time and place. It was like lambs led to the slaughter. And it was like God had set them up and was, Lord, why have you brought us here? And you know, within the hearts and minds of the people, you gotta think that, hey, Mo Moses, why did you bring us out here to die? You know, we could have died comfortable, you know, by the pots of meat and the bread we enjoyed in Egypt. And, you know, we, yeah, we would be slaves and we would be working our buns off. And, and yet, uh, you know, we had enough meat and we had shelter and, you know, we could have died there as easily in a life of uh, ease, at least uh, relax, rather than being slaughtered here. But he goes on in 10, he says, The Pharaoh drew near the sons of Israel, looked, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. They became very frightened. So the sons of Israel cried out uh, to the Lord. Uh, as the enemy drew closer, we see the, um, the reaction of the people they saw. And much of the times when we see things, guys, you know, we, we get fearful. Uh, tonight when we're coming to church, uh, this, this uh, police officer for some reason was driving on the wrong side of the road, speeding down the road. And, uh, you know, with, with, this re with no regard for the oncoming traffic of which we were the oncoming traffic. So, of course, you know, we, we were fearful because hey, we saw the car coming and Johnny tried to slow down and pull over to the right and so on and so forth. But they reacted and we kind of thought, wow, what's going on? And the guy almost clipped us and, you know. Uh, and, but, you know, this was the reaction of the people as they saw the enemy drawing closer. They saw, they reacted in fear. And, you know, this was much more than a fender bender. This was, the, they, they figured that, hey, we were absolutely going to get annihilated. This is it. We're going to get wiped out. Everyone, every man, woman, every child, we're going to get wiped out by the Egyptians. We, we're going to pay the price. But the real good thing is that they cried out to the Lord. And, you know, um, at times things uh, uh, go so quick that, you know, we can... We can cry out. Some guys, they said that, you know, in the in, uh, right before a plane, plane crash and stuff like that, they're cursing God, you know, and, and they you know, the bad things are coming out. Rather than God help us, it's God, you know, this and God that and Jesus this and Jesus that. But I'm glad that, you know, uh, uh, we, we normally pray when we have our devotion in the morning. You know, a lot of times we're praying, hey, Lord, give us traveling mercies. Give us strength. For the day and you know god is kind of covering over us with his protection and his provision and you know i'm so glad that we can begin the day and just say hey god we want to start the day with you here's a little bit of a devotion here's a little bit of a a verse that we we zooming zooming in on here's a bit of our presenting our lives to you afresh this very morning so you know early in the morning you know we we cry out to the lord early in the morning we come uh, lifting our hands up to him. and uh, But here, right after this, look at this. Uh, they were frightened. They cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? And, uh, <laughs> is it... Uh, is this not the word that we spoke to in Egypt saying, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? And you see their reaction, yeah? For it would be, have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. You know, this is exactly the way we can expect people to react. And uh, uh, Pastor Chuck always had that uh, good answer. You know, he would say that, oh, well, sheep will be sheep. And, you know, it didn't seem to bother him, I'm sure. It did, the reaction of people. But th these are the same people that were 
uh, probably crying out to uh, Moses, oh, you're our savior, you're leading us out of slavery. Now they want to condemn him, they want to stone him, you know, they want to blame him for everything. But right after they lashed out at Moses, uh, they, they lashed out at Moses, accusing him of leading them uh, to their certain demise. And we're certainly going to die out on this, uh, this forsaken desert. And uh, why don't you leave us alone in bondage in Egypt? Hey. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, prisons seem attractive. <laughs> we had our first three squares in prison and we were safe. Uh, now you're going to get us killed. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, 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 servitude was attractive. Hey, why didn't you leave us alone was the thought. Prison never looked better, they said. And uh, uh, that's, that's the way it is. People turn in a heartbeat. People turn in a flash. And I think God is trying to get us to the, that place where we're kind of even keeled. You know, we, we always looking to the Lord. Lord, you're in the midst of this. Lord, you're in the midst of this attack. Lord, you are in the midst of this harassment that I'm going through here at this situation. Whatever it might be. And God is just trying to say, even though we react, you know, we, we, uh, we might calm down and you say, oh yeah, God, sorry. You know, we, I'm just overreactive. And uh, I, I, I know that you got it. I know that you got it. And, uh, but again, uh, verse 13, But Moses said to the people, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you have seen today, uh, you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Wow. Moses, to his credit, he encourages the people to trust the Lord and to wait for his salvation. Salvation says hey, we're saved from death. Salvation says we're saved and rescued and uh, delivered from the certain, uh, the certain death that was before us. His provision and his protection is for you. I believe, he says, with great resolve, the Lord will fight for you. He believed it. You know, he said it with, with uh, a resolute heart and a firm and a, uh, a solid conviction that God is faithful. God is the one fighting for you, fighting for me. I'm not just mouthing words. I'm not just lip service. I'm just not waha, you know, Mr. Waha Nui. But I'm really saying that, hey, God is the one going before us. God is the one fighting on our behalf. And uh, uh, in 15, he goes on. Uh, he says, uh, then the Lord says to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward. And I like this. Uh, uh, the, 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 it didn't say Moses was crying out to the Lord, but he was directing his, uh, his uh, speech to the people. But, you know, there's certain places in the Bible. There's one uh, verse in, uh, in Revelation chapter 17, uh, chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. John had a question in his mind and in his heart. And one of the elders asked him the question and answered the question in the same breath. In other words, uh, uh, he, the, uh, he, who are these and where have they come from? The, the elder asked him, and that was the exact question that John had on his mind. Who are these and where have they come from? And you know, the, 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 the elder answered him and said, hey, these are the those that have come out of the tribulation, they've washed their robes in the blood. They've come from every nation, you know, and the Lord has rescued them as, as they've committed their lives over to him. And John, John, to his credit, he had that. He was probably going to ask it, but the elder answered it. And the, the same thing right here. Uh, the Lord answers Moses. He says, I don't know if the Lord speaks before Moses, is, before Moses can. But the, the words were, go forward. His words were, go forward. Many times, humans, guys, you and me, and the Israelites, we are filled with fear. And it's like we can't or we won't move. But it's God who, uh, who urges us to move. And you know, uh, at times, things get spooky. At times, how are we going to get it done? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Uh, what are you going to do? And, you know, uh, we, we worry, we, we fret, we fear. And, you know, we go back to the, the psalmist. He says, hey, you know, uh, don't, do not fret, but trust in the Lord. You know, uh, continue on in him. Uh, uh, you know, again, human beings, we're just in this nature of being fear-filled. Uh, uh, but it's God who urges us to move. And whether we like it here or uh, it's to go forward, but uh, it could be go to the left or to the right. 
At times, unless we're moving, God can't really direct our steps. God can't say, hey, you gotta, let, you gotta uh, veer to the left a little bit here, or you gotta keep going straight ahead, or you gotta go to the right, or just stop right here, like he told the children of Israel. Stop right here and wait, you know? And you know, I cannot determine what that is for you. I, I, I cannot determine what it is, and I can barely determine what it is for me because I'm bump, uh, bumbling along, stumbling along, and uh, even as long as we go with the Lord, we still aren't certain. It's still not set in stone, uh, our path and our direction, but we know that if we continue to worship the Lord, we know that we continue to seek Him first. We know that we continue to be a people of worship. We know that we continue to gather. We continue to consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. We know that we do not forsake the assembling of the saints as is the habit of some, oh, I, I do it by long distance and, you know, oh, they, they don't let me sit by my son, oh, whatever. <laughs> Sometimes I want to tease the guys. <laughs> they don't want to go back to their church because of this or that. It's, hey, they don't realize that they have gifts that God wants to bless others within the body of Christ. And, oh, but I share a lot, but... I, I go back to the, the thoughts of Paul. You know, his sending church was the church at Antioch. And all, it always seems that he went off on his missionary journeys. He always came back to his home base, his home church. He came back to the church of Antioch. He came back for the fellowship. He came back for the refreshment. He came back to give a report of what was going on. He came back to encourage the, his fellow believers and to be ministered to by his fellow believers. And I really believe that we have the body of Christ to encourage and to, to, uh, to foster growth within the body. And not saying, oh, I go out there and I serve and I come over here and I, I wanna just sit. I don't wanna serve. You know, and and uh, we all called. We all called. We all have this, uh, the time and the talent and the treasures. And we, some just say, oh, I don't wanna serve i just hear yeah, I, I don't you know i'm a basket case already i just uh, i can't do anything you know and uh uh they don't cut it man. <laughs> but uh, again it's a thing that uh uh he says uh go forward keep moving you know and uh in 16 he goes on 16 and uh, for as you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it <coughs> The sons of Israel shall go through the midst of the, the sea on dry ground. But as for me, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and uh, uh, that they will go in after them. And I will be honored through the Pharaoh and all his army through the chariots and his horsemen. His instructions were Moses, lift up your staff, stretch out your hand and divide it. And at times uh, uh, we may be holding out our hands. And a lot of times, you know, I know that uh, most of us, we close our eyes during the praise and worship. A lot of times, you know, if you open and you glance, uh, you open your eyes briefly and glance, you're going to see people lifting up their hands. And, you know, you, you might be crazy. Uh, you, might, you might see me on the road riding my motorcycle at times, and sometimes I have one hand on the throttle and one left hand lifted up because I'm praying, you know. <laughs> I'm saying, Lord, hold back the rain or something like that. <laughs> But you know, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a symbol of saying, "Hey Lord, I'm reaching out to you. Lord, I'm following after you." And the instructions were to Moses: "Hey, lift up your staff, stretch out your hand, and divide that you know the thing that's in front of you. Divide the thing that's a hindrance. Divide the thing that's a that's blocking your way." And uh, and at times we may be holding out your hand or lifting up your hands as, as an act of obedience, an act of worship, and an act of faith towards the Lord and in all things I shall be honored even uh, is the uh, in the distractions of the wicked guys in the destruction of the wicked and uh, you know I, I'm saddened to say that as, as righteous as our God is and his love and his salvation his grace and his mercy his in his righteousness there will be the, a time of reckoning for the wicked for those who have hardened their heart and refused uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. What, what did the Lord say? That it is only one gift that's unforgivable. And it's the rejection of the Holy Spirit. And the, the, the Holy Spirit is that gift given to us as we come into that, that saving grace, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
the same, the same way uh, of faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ, were the same way that the Old Testament saints were saved also. They came by faith. And, you know, if you read the book of Hebrews, they, say, they tell you that exactly, that it's by faith that Old Testament saints were saved. And uh, same like us, it, it's in faith that we, we receive salvation in, in the Jesus Christ and we're sealed with the promised pledge of the Holy Spirit. In 19, the angel of the Lord who had been going before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. The pillar of cloud moved before them and stood behind them. We see in this verse that the cloud and the pillow of fire stood between Israel and those in pursuit of them. Like the Lord standing between our foes and watching our blindside guys, we will probably never know how many times he has interceded with protection on our behalf. You know, we might have been just la di dying dying along and bopping along, we've got our headphones on, we're crossing the street, we're not paying attention. You might be like a thousand other guys, they're walking across the street, they're staring down at the phone. You might be walking along the sidewalk, you gotta go, hey, look out, man, because the guy's ready to just walk right into you because they're looking at their phone. And, and you just never know uh, uh, where God has been protecting us. He's been watching our blind side. He's been watching our backside. And then God is like that. He's interceded with protection on our behalf. It came up between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. There was a cloud along with the darkness, yet it gave light at night. Thus this one did not come near to the other all night. Like the cloud, uh, uh, like, uh, like the light of the Lord God shining his way, giving illumination to the child of God, great darkness was upon the camp of the enemy. Uh, the enemy was in the dark. Uh, the children of Israel, they were in the light. And you might say that, hey, we in the light, we do all things in the light. We do all things in the light of the glory of God. And the enemy is stuck there in the darkness. And, you know, we go back to Isaiah. Oh, they're like blind men. They're groping along because they can't see. And they, they, they say they see, but when they really say they see, we, they really know that the Lord really knew that their hearts were hardened toward him because they could see with their eyes, but their, their, the eyes of their heart were blinded because of the sin and because of the hardness that, separate the, that separated them off. 21 uh, and 22, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land. So the waters were divided, and all the, and all the children of Israel went through the midst of the sea on dry land, and the waters were like a wall on them, to them on the, their right hand and on their left hand. As, uh, as directed by the Lord, Moses was careful to follow through. The Lord uh, parted the sea, and all of Israel crossed over on dry land. And uh, uh, then the Egyptians took, uh, uh, took up their per pursuit, and all the Pharaoh's horses and all the chariots and all his horsemen went in after them into the midst of the sea. And it came about at the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of cloud, fire and the cloud and brought the army uh, uh, of Egyptians into confusion. First Corinthians 14.33, Paul wrote to the church saying that the Lord is not a God of confusion, but of peace. And here, uh, here we find the exception for those driven by motives uh, of fear and hatred and, uh, and are moved by, again, uh, forces of evil. Uh, they were brought into confusion, uh, and, and the Lord allowed that. And uh, he caused the chariot wheels to swerve, and he made them drive with difficulty. So the Egyptians said, let us flee from Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. It was... Uh, it was too late as the realization that uh, hit home. God was on the side of his people. If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, we're going to end here tonight, and uh, you guys can finish up the rest of the chapter on your own this week. But uh, I, I, I want to come up with that thought that if God is for us, who can be against us? If you're going through a time of discouragement and despair, if you're going to, uh, uh, you know, it's so funny that a lot of times, uh, I, as I've uh, read through the, this Bible so many times and I have little notes uh, penciled into the margin and stuff like that, I have uh, here three words, fear, 
doubt and despair. And you know, it's so appropriate that you know, uh, no matter what the time or what the consequence or whatever, at times we go through this fear, this doubt and despair. But you know, again, I like to answer uh, that with this. If God is for us, who is against us? Who can be against us? God is a mighty God and God has already defeated the enemy. The enemy knows what his uh, consequences are. He knows that he's going to be going into that great uh, lake of fire for all eternity, guys. And he's kicking up a little bit of a storm now. He's giving us a bad time. He's giving us a time that he wants to bring fear, fill us with fear, with doubt, and despair. But he's the one in confusion, although he wants to muddy up the waters at times. So, you know, know, and, uh, know that God is God and God, Jesus is Lord. And he is the great I am, and he, he is able to do beyond what we think or ask. And uh, he is able to uh, go before us and to direct our paths and uh, uh, direct our steps. Amen, guys? Let's pray. Father God, we do want to thank you for this evening, Lord. And we, we love uh, your Bible, Lord, because it's so uh, enlightening, Lord. It's so encouraging, Lord. It's so filled with uh, truths about you, Lord. And uh, uh, truths about the world, Lord God, and we can see how contrasting uh, those uh, those truths and the lies are, Lord, and we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the testimony we have in your word that speaks of your great love for us, your provision, your protection. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Bless us as we go now. Amen and amen. amen.